Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Jade Order on the Nintendo Switch. A sci-fi puzzle strategy experience, how does it play and can it earn its spot amongst some of the greats on the console? Well hit subscribe, but join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. The story is relatively minimalistic, a few slides to open the game of text and also to close. It's a fine enough setting establishing this location though and our role in this world. Now the concept is this, gods are at war, an eternal war at that, and we must here preserve balance. There's two sides in this battle, a goddess of life and god of death. The goddess, she preserves beacons but she is getting weak and these are essential for balance. The God of Death senses this and launches an all-out attack. Now that is where you come in. You take on the role of a warrior. We've awakened from slumber and we must protect the Jade Order ruins and save the day. You know, protect that balance. Again, look minimalistic in its delivery, but it's a nice enough setting and it gives you a purpose. Gameplay then and this one it's set over 5 locations each containing 10 levels each. Concept is simple enough, defeat enough enemies that's marked in the upper left of the screen with red markers gives you a count to kind of then light the beacon. If you light it you get to move to it and advance. This is a game that's built around the idea of moving one space at a time but as you move so do your enemies. These enemies, of course you need to position yourself to destroy them, but do not attack from the front, they will destroy you. It always needs to be an angle of either side on or from behind. We also then have three additional goals on each stage, these are bonus, that's going to be a spark medal, that's awarded for collecting up three challenge medals following completion of a location, there's the ancient coin medal, that is a treasure chest you need to reach, and then finally the swift medal. The Swift Medal, by far the most challenging, that gives you a maximum number of moves that you can consume to succeed. It instantly though, all three of these add longevity to the experience because beating the game for me, that was just kind of the beginning. I had very few of these achieved after my initial run, so now it's time to go back. It's definitely going to be good for those that like to go for 100% completion and that's also then tracked on the main menu. The game gets tough though by that fifth location, I was frequently stumbling through levels, I was nowhere near that swift count. Make a mistake though, you know let's say you make a misstep or meet a swift death, you can rewind instantly just one step at a time with the left trigger. There is no limit on this and should you choose you could let's say go all the way back to the beginning of the level so it's really good as a method of practicing that trial and error. New enemies then also get introduced with progression and they start relatively simple, you know, just casually moving from space to space. But by the end game, you'll face essentially turrets and those that can chuck fire your way for pretty much the entire length of the map. It really makes sure you're going to be adapting and evolving to the battlefield surrounding you. There is not the largest selection of enemies in here, but given it packs 50 levels, I still will say it felt like enough. When it comes to this gameplay then I've said you can attack from the side and back, that plays out automatically, but the real core of the gameplay here is what's known as the sparks. This is the green meter in the top left of the screen and there's actually four contained to unlock on this adventure. These are essentially special abilities that come at a cost of either one or two sparks. Before you can use these though, you'll need to find the sparks, simple enough, green diamonds on the battlefield or enemies that have a glowing green ring around them, they will drop them in defeat. When it comes to using them then, as I said there is four, you've got one that moves an enemy an extra space, there's one that freezes an enemy for two turns, that actually allows for front attacks as well. You have a teleport ability, particularly useful as these maps eventually split and then finally you have a lethal lightning bolt. Really the only other elements to the gameplay, you can unblock the path of let's say one of your foes by let's say defeating a static enemy, if you do that they'll start moving in longer paths. Then there's also enemy collision, if two enemies collide they actually bounce off each other, if you find yourself on the space where that bounce occurs you will not be harmed. 
Generally, though, I've been impressed with Jade Order. It's not the longest of games at first completion. I'd say maybe two to three hours, though that will be completely dependent on your ability to overcome these, you know, puzzles. It plays well, though, and it combines a simple set of mechanics that constantly evolve throughout the 50 levels. It's always giving you just enough time to learn a tactic before it introduces some sort of new foe that has you entirely rethinking your strategy. Complaints wise for gameplay, I wish we did have a few extra levels. I think there's room for expansion, honestly. And I also wish there was a few extra modes in here, like outside of 100% completion, I don't foresee a whole lot else to come back for. This would have been great with some, let's say, high score tracking or online leaderboards. Also then the movement, there's a split second until you can choose your next move. And initially it kept missing my input because I was reacting too quickly. So I wish this could just be, you know, instant. Overall though, it's nine bucks or your regional equivalent. It's a budget price point and yeah, the gameplay, it's simple but effective. And I do think it's accomplished in what it does. Graphically then, this is what initially appealed to me with Jade Order. It's a combination of, you know, pixel work, vibrant colours. I was getting almost hyper like drifter vibes. And while it's quite a bit more old school looking than that, I still liked it a lot. Our character is simple but effective in a full suit of armour. The maps are easy to translate into movement patterns. And it's clear, though enemies are on set paths, some effort has been put into their animations. As you do progress, my only word of advice, in fact, for graphics, scan the battlefield entirely before you make that first move. Enemies become deadly with range, and I had to keep reminding myself of that, well, that or they would be blowing me to pieces. The menus continue that same pixel of five, but it's not quite as accomplished. It tracks your progress across all the challenges, which is a great thing, but yeah, I think maybe a simple text display would have been a whole lot like easier to understand. Also, enemies, not the largest variety, but there's some good designs. That said, we get a couple of color swaps in here. One turret, like enemy, shows they fire further with simply a different color. When the cast is this limited, I tend to lean into personally, I'd like it to be a little more unique. Finally, for graphics, the backgrounds of our five locations and battlefields. A little extra variety, maybe, maybe an extra dash of detail would have gone a long way. They start to feel a tad repetitive. The story then as well, almost comic book panels, nothing special, but absolutely in keeping with the rest of the game. Audio finally, and this one, it's actually a solo dev behind this one, I hadn't mentioned that yet, but he got a hell of a team behind him. Rosen on audio and then Revan for sound design, I believe I'm pronouncing both of those right. Now Rosen is known for orchestral compositions, he's on Spotify and arrangements include works from Zelda and Nier, which have seen release since Fire Commissions. This is him stretching his legs with his own material and this electronic score does not disappoint, in fact, the music in this video, it is straight from the game. Sound effects then, another solid effort doing enough to build upon and elevate this world and the power of your attacks. Even those of your enemies, it definitely adds a little bit of tension. So the final verdict and Jade Order is a bite-sized budget puzzle experience that I can easily recommend to at least fans of the genre. It is 50 levels of escalating challenge that give you reason to go back thanks to challenges and that's going to be the collecting of medals or cutting down your move count. The story is simple then but it gives you a reason and it's topped off with some great visual and audio work. Sure, some of the visuals are a little repetitive and the movement, that minor delay before it's your turn, you'll need to kind of get used to that. But yeah, outside of that, very few complaints, really enjoyed it, definitely through a challenging experience my way. I just kind of want to see now where they go next. Give me more, give me high score chasing online, give me more levels, give me more of this world with maybe a more detailed story. For me though today, it's a great 8 out of 10, starting at 9 bucks for your regional equivalent. I just don't think you can complain and hopefully there's now going to be more to come from Studio Tortuga Charlotte, a solo dev that clearly has some skill. This though, it's their first foray into the world of Nintendo Switch and I think we can call it a success. Predominantly before this, they were phone games, so yeah, hopefully this won't be the last we're seeing of them. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. 
as much as we will do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.